All ready, 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 ready. Hello. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, wait. Mike's not even plugged in. <laughs> plug it in. Ooh. The commercial plug it in, plug it in. All right. Maybe that sounds better. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. Guess what, ladies? I already did the Woman of God Bible study, my first recording today. I'm actually rendering it right now so Bam. you guys are gonna get that tomorrow i'm excited yeah so uh today's what's today oh monday today's monday i start yeah. my new job tomorrow that's right today is monday um this is our second devotional that's gonna go to podcast wow okay yeah so guys if you are if you find yourself at work watching these youtube videos and hiding from your boss <laughs> Shut YouTube down, get Spotify, and get the podcast so you can just listen to it in one ear. If you're a woman, put your hair over the earphone and act like you're working, but you're really listening to this devotional. That's not good advice to no? give them. Not like that. You could just listen and do your work at the same time. I'm just kidding. Gosh. I'm kidding. So, um, you know, thank you so much for all the comments that we've been receiving. Uh, I just... I just love reading more and more um, yeah. everybody's comments. And, you know, David reads his, I and, and he reads them all on his own, and then I read them on my own, too. I don't normally answer for him. He answers his own, and I answer my own comments, you know, and everything. So thank you once again. It's very inspiring, motivating, and encouraging to us so that we can keep doing this. Bookmarks with my book on it. And Alfonso's book on it. Nice. You know how to, you know how they can get one of these? No. By leaving a review of the book on whether it's Alfonso's or mine on Amazon, and I will send this to them free. So I promise I, I will. I can't have one then? You can have this one. I haven't left a Oh yeah. She has to leave a review, right guys? That's not nice. <laughs> Seriously guys, come on. Um, the reason I say that is because it helps. It helps, you know. Um, YouTube ranks books by how many comments a book has. Yeah. And the more comments it has, the more somebody types Christian or Christian book or Christian autobiography, Christian testimony, it bumps these up. There are so many books out there. Yeah, so there is. we want a fighting chance. Everybody that's read it says it's a good book, so the world should read it. Amen. Amen so, to that. Yeah. So guys, um besides that, we just did a lot of errands today and everything and we're really excited about just coming back and and sharing with you all. I know that we have to do it a little bit earlier now because my mornings are going to be a little bit early. So let's get started. What's the verse, Joel? Yes, we're going to go. Which we've never we've never spoken out of Joel. No. No. So uh, Joel two twelve. And don't forget, guys, that David is reading out of the New King James Version. And what I do right after is I go ahead and read it out of the Message Bible. I don't think my Bible has Joel. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Joel what? You're being funny, right? 212. Okay. Let me put my bookmark there. Whatever. <laughs> what? You're mean. Why am I mean? Because now you're teasing me with your bookmark. I'm not teasing you. I just want them to leave a review. <laughs> All right. So okay. Go, go 12 for to it. what? Uh, 12 to 14. Wait, no. No, 12 and 13. Oh, yeah, 12 to 14. Yeah, 12 to 14. All right. Don't confuse me. This is the Old Testament. This is what is called one of the minor prophets, the prophet Joel. So what? So for those who don't understand what minor means, what 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 do you mean by minor prophet? Minor prophet is um, the Bible is not written like a storyline, like you know how if like my testimony, mm -hmm. like my testimony. What is just come <laughs> you on? You know, from what the time I was young to the time of now, the Bible is actually put into compartments. You know, and the Bible split up into the first five books of the books of Moses. Mm -hmm. Then it's uh, the major prophets. And and then it's, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
I messed up. Five books of Moses first, then the history of Israel, then the poetry books like Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. then the major prophets like Ezekiel, Isaiah, and then the minor prophets. So it's not like saying they're minors as less important. It's just the section that the Bible is. It's was just the order in. it's in. Yeah. Okay. So Joel is one of the minor prophets, Joel, Hosea, Malachi, mm -hmm. you know, some of the smaller books. Okay. Okay. So Joel 12, chapter 2, verse 12 says this. It says, now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him? a grain offering, and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Amen. In the message, it reads, But there also this, there is also this. It's not too late. God's personal message. Come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping sorry for your sins. Change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God. And here's why. God is kind and merciful. He takes a deep breath, puts up with a lot. This most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to cancel catastrophe. Who knows, maybe he'll do it now. Maybe he'll turn around and show pity. Maybe when all's said and done, there'll be blessings full and robust for your God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Sorry. You know, I want to I wanna break this thing down. Like we always do. Yes. How does this passage become relevant to our life? Mm -hmm. How does it reflect us today? You know, and a lot that's a lot of questions people have is, why do you read this book that was written hundreds of years ago by people that uh, sat on camels and lived in a desert? Yeah. Like, how does that pertain to me? You know, and the Bible is the living word of God, first of all. You can always take. It's so rich. You can always take from it. So the very first part of the first verse, it says this. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Now, have you ever had somebody tell you that they're sorry? But they're, you see it in their face that they're not sorry. Yeah. What do I always say when somebody says sorry? Don't say it unless you mean it. Don't say it unless you mean and it. And meaning and meaning it means you won't do it again. Exactly. Yeah. So so the Lord is like, listen, I want you to turn to me with all your heart. And when you turn to me with all your heart, let it be with fasting and weeping and with mourning. See, a lot of times nowadays people don't want to say repent. They want to say, Oh, you know, just follow after God and, and just, you know, live after Him. But how can you do that unless you repent first? You know what repent means? It means a 180. Yeah, complete turn. You know, sometimes I think we don't grasp the fact that when, when, when many of us lived for the world, it's embarrassing. There was, there was, there was things in my life that I did that I would have been embarrassed if my mom and dad would have known. Yeah. Just straight embarrassed. I don't mean, yeah, you. I mean, yeah, general, like me too. Just you know? embarrassed. Yeah. And the few times I would get caught doing something, man, I felt so embarrassed. I felt so, I remember, you know, I just because shared. Because we know that they never taught us that. Yeah. I just shared in service that I couldn't look at my dad when I was going to jail. And in the cell, I mean, in the visiting room and through the glass, I couldn't look up to my dad because I felt so ashamed. And when I finally looked up to him, I broke because I was so sorrowful with all of my heart. That's why a lot of people don't understand is why do people cry at church? Do you understand that you're at a place where you're completely bare yes. unto God? And here's what gets me. This is why I've cried because... I'm bearing everything to him, and he still wants me? Yeah. He still wants you? How many times have you rejected God, 
And then when you finally cry out to him, he doesn't say, oh, now you want me? No, he embraces you yes. and it breaks you. How many times have we walked away and just went back to our old and picked up our old things? And it, it's almost like a slap in his face and be like, you know, I'm, I know you're there and I know you've done all this for me. I know that you're, you're, you're loving me and everything, but, you know, it's not enough. I need, I need to pick up my old baggage and I need to just go back because that's where I'm comfortable. That's all I know. You know, how harsh is that? Yeah. But the thing is, is that a lot of people stay there thinking that there is no redemption or they think that there's no forgiveness or they think that God is not merciful. They think that, you know, you know, I, I hurt him so bad. Why am I going to go back? Yeah. You know, or I don't know how to go back anymore. Look what I've done. I keep coming back and I keep coming back to the same old place and I don't know how to get back up. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and he says something real interesting that there's some there's historical um, ex explanation for this next part. So not only does he say, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning, but the next verse 13 says, so rend your heart and not your garments. How does it say it in that one? It says, change your life, not just your clothes. See, here's the thing, right? Yeah. In Jewish times, when something hurt you, they would literally rip their robe open. Yeah, yeah. As a, as a, as a show of sorrow. Mm-hmm. That's what they would do. Actually, when Joseph, when they brought back to Joseph mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the bloody garment, his, yeah, father, his father ripped. ripped yeah. he, rent, he ripped his garment yeah. to show that he was in sorrow, to show that he was in the pain. The agony, the pain. The agony, mm -hmm. the, 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 the tragedy. And God is like, listen, don't be ripping your clothes for me. I want you to rip your heart for me. Mm. That's what he's saying. He was rend your heart. And not your garments. And I love where it says, come back to me and really mean it. Yes. Really That's why he's it. saying that. He goes, quit ripping your clothes and start ripping your heart. You know, I just did an interview today and I said a whole lot to him, you know, but I'm just like, listen, we can go back and forth uh, on the Bible and history and all this and that, but I'm here to tell you what he did inside of me. Yes. He broke me. He shattered me and he put me back together. And, and it's like, he's like, How, what, do you, what advice do you have to tell somebody to get away from gangs? And I'm like, and it was not a Christian, it was a podcast interview, it was not a Christian show. And I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I can't give you no other advice but Jesus. Yes. He's the only one. He's the chain breaker. He's the one that sets the captive free. He's the only one. that, that So it's like, all he's asking of us is to rip our hearts open to him. And remember that example I gave you about my dad in the field? Before they plant the seed, they have to rip the yes. ground. Yes. See, my dad's a farmer, been a farmer all his life. And I would ask him, Dad, you know, when I was growing up, what what'd you do today? And he's like, oh, I was ripping the ground. Yeah. And I'm like, plowing the fields, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. What, do you, what do you mean ripping the ground? And he showed me the tractor and it was these huge discs. So they would literally take that through the field and rip the ground open in order for it to receive the seed. So I love the fact that God is saying, quit ripping your clothes and rip your heart. Mm, can you imagine to rip your heart? That means that means you're going to go through some pain. <coughs> that means you're going to go through some stuff. Yes. You know, some pretty heavy stuff. But the thing is, is that God is, is there with you through it all. And he's saying, just do this and let me embrace you. Yeah. He, he's like, I'm not telling you to rip your heart open to hurt you. No. I'm telling you to rip your heart open so I can plant that seed of yes. love. Plant that seed of forgiveness. Plant that seed of holiness. And, and you, know, you know what happens? I told my dad, what happens if you don't rip the field? He goes, then I lay a bunch of seed and the birds eat it. Yeah. He goes, what good is throwing seed if it's not going to go in the ground? So what good is the gospel coming to your life if your heart ain't open to receive that That's seed? That's right. That's right. So then it says after that, so rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Yes. Is that the part you read already? It says, change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God. And here's why. God is kind and merciful. He takes a deep breath, puts up with a lot. God he, is he does kind. put up with a lot with us, huh? 
God is gracious. Like seriously. <laughs> of course. Wow. We're we're stubborn. We're stubborn species. Mm-hmm. You know, from the beginning of time, he told the birds, "I want you to fly in the winter. I want you to fly to the south, and fly to the north when it, when the winter's over." You know what the birds do to this day? Exactly what exactly he ordered them what to he do. Ordered them to do. Birds are in obedience to God. He told the turtle, "I want you to go up on the sea, uh, go up on the shore, and plant your eggs." And he tells the babies, "When you hatch, make your way immediately into the ocean, so nothing you know eats you." And what do the turtles do? They've been in obedience ever since. And mankind has been in disobedience from the beginning. Look at Eve and Adam and Eve. Every, every <laughs> animal. Like, Hello. Every animal is in obedience. Yeah. Except our cat. I don't know what's wrong with that cat. <laughs> but isn't that crazy how when we watch these nature shows on Disney yeah. Plus. They, they're, they're there to do and exactly. to even pollinate plants to create um, oxygen to do this to do that it's just it's amazing if they were if animals are disobedient insects bugs ants then literally our ecosystem would fall apart yeah it would but every plant every tree every bug every animal everything obeys god what would he told it to do with a purpose yes yes you know who's rebellious us but you know what we're hard-headed man but here's the thing God is gracious he and is. merciful. He is. You know what mercy means? It means he's showing you kindness when you don't deserve kindness. It's, it's, it reminds me of the word meek when you talk about meekness. Because he's able to destroy, yeah. but he chooses not to. He chooses to love us and he chooses to embrace us with his soft heart, with who he is. And there can be wrath, but he, he, doesn't, he chooses not to do that. He chooses to forgive exactly yeah so he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and he relents from doing harm yeah how does it say that or you already read it on there no not yet uh the most patient god extravagant in love always ready to cancel catastrophe who knows maybe he'll do it now maybe he'll turn around and show pity wow So God is speaking through the prophet Joel, or Joel. And the Lord is saying, listen, he's he's talking to Israel because Israel had turned away from God at this time. And God is giving Israel another chance. He's like, listen. Come back. You got to turn to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Quit ripping your clothes and rip your heart. He returned to me because I'm gracious and merciful. I'm slow to anger. Like God is so patient and he relents from doing harm. He's like, listen, I don't want to do you harm. Here's the thing, right? It's like people say, oh, God, God was wrathful and and, and he was a mean God. No, what God did in Old Testament, if you really look at it, is when calamity fell upon people, it's not that God caused pain. It's that God took his protection off. Yeah. He took his protection off off and at that point it's like all the elements now come in yeah it's like living in a bubble and all this bacteria is trying to get to you and it's not like god is sending bacteria god just takes the bubble off he says okay you don't want me okay all right you know but it says here he's slow to anger and and he relents from doing harm you know he doesn't want to do that you know that saying um where they say come back to your first love That's what he's saying. Come back. Come back, you know? And I think there's many people that either backslide, they they call it backslider, that have just gone back to the things of the world is, is what I say, you know, that they've decided that maybe it's too hard or maybe they just can't, they really can't, um, they think that it's just too, too, too hard to live a life with God. So, He's saying, come back to me. Yeah. I just want you to come back. I'm not going to hold anything against you. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to, I'm here for you. I'm not going to hold the fact that you made the wrong choice. It's okay because I love you. He loves us so unconditional that he's just ready to, to write that all off and just, you know, keep loving us. You know, there's another part of scripture where God says that he has good thoughts toward us each and every day. Yeah. And he has good 
thoughts for our future. You know, and one of the past the re, one of the reasons why I want to read this passage is Sharon had said before we played the video. She goes, you know, I feel there's a lot of people out there that served God, fell away, stumbled, and now they feel guilty to come back. And we're doing this video to tell you that as long as you're breathing, you can come back. You can come back to your first love. Yeah. You can come back to the one that is gracious, the one that is kind, the one that has good thoughts toward you, the one that wants you to have a good future. Satan does not want you to have a good future. He, matter of fact, he wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your hopes and your dreams. And God wants to restore your dreams, restore your family, restore your health, restore your future. Because he is merciful and slow to anger. He's basically saying, come back to me. Come back to me, but don't do it fake. Don't do it on the outside by ripping your clothes. Do it on the inside by ripping your heart. You know, uh, my oldest son is 29 years old. And I raised my kids. He was uh, five years old and my daughter was about three and a half when we started going to church. And throughout all those years, through those 20 years, 22 years almost, um, my kids had seen so many people come and go and we were in a really tough ministry where we would go and and really minister to the gangs to the you know the prostitute to the drug you know infested people who were just you know com completely in addiction and everything um a lot of homes a lot of that and my kids would see that come and go come and go come and go not me realizing that as an adult it was going to affect them and, you know, I remember my son going through something a few years back, and I said, mijo, I go, you grew up in the things of the Lord. You know, you know that you're, I, I surrendered your life to, to, to Christ, and then you surrendered when it was time for you to carry your cross. You know that you surrendered your life to Christ. Why are you not back in the body? Why are you not um, following the things of God? And he says, Mom, he says, I can't be like what I seen growing up, the jumping in and out, in and out, in and out. And, you know, and it's heartbreaking to me as a mother, because I feel that having him in that environment and everything, he was able to see all that. And so that made him believe like, if, and he told me, mom, if I ever come back to God in that and serving God, because I love God, he's all, but if I ever come back to serving God, it's for good. I don't want to be a fake I don't want to be that person that jumps in, jumps out, jumps in, jumps out. But you know, what's heartbreaking as a mother is that we know that tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. We know that tomorrow is not promised and that's hard. It's really, really hard. So that's why it's so important every single time, we have said it many times, that we lead by example, especially yeah. our family, our children and our loved ones because we don't ever want them to be affected in that way that can cost them their soul and their spiritual life, yeah. you know? Because what if tomorrow's too late? Today is the day of salvation. Yes. That's what the Bible says. You know, I mean, even, you know, Kobe, do you think he thought that was his last day? No. On top of the world, millions of dollars in the bank, property. Uh, beautiful family. Beautiful family, you know, financially stable. Gets in a multi-million dollar helicopter, not thinking that he literally had minutes to live. Or however long that ride was at, you know. And none of us know. None of us know. I don't know. I, and we don't know. Every time we get in the car, every time we sleep. Things happen, you know, and today's the day of salvation. Don't wait for another day. If you've ever served God and you're not serving God now, today is the day to rededicate because he is saying, come back to me with mourning. Come back to me in fasting. Come back to me broken and I will restore you. He is the restorer. Yes, of everything. You know, I remember um, off of 99 in Modesto by the church, every time we get on the freeway, um, there's a wrecking yard right off the freeway you can see. Remember that wrecking yard? Mm -hmm. Kind of coming from Ceres. Yeah. 
And um, one time it dawned on me, a long time ago, years ago, I said, that's exactly... See, when we want a car, we go to the new dealerships. Yeah, yeah. And But God, do you realize God, he goes to the wrecking yards. <laughs> he finds the rejected, the broken, the crushed. All those cars are crushed. Don't even work anymore. Nobody wants them. They're full of rust. See, when God wants to use someone, he doesn't go to the brand new dealership. He goes to the wrecking yard where nobody is looking for anything and God finds a treasure. Why? Do, how do I know that? Because I was a wreck and he found me and he restored me and he polished me. You know, and, and it's like he doesn't fill, it, fill us with gas. He fills us with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know, and it's like if you feel like you're a wreck, there's how many people say, oh, man, I'm a wreck. Well, guess what? It's exactly what he's looking for. You know, I love that you said that because of the fact that, you know, everybody's told me, why do you like old stuff? You know, why do you like antiques? Why do you like that? And I see the beauty. I see the beauty in things that can, you know, be cleaned up a little or just, you know, give it a little bit of life and everything because they mm. have a story. Yeah. They have a testimony itself, you know, like my big old hutch, you know, I found that in an alley and I cleaned it up and fixed it up and it's just beautiful, you know, and to me, I tell people all the time, you want to know why I love old things and why I love it because they have a testimony itself. Yeah. And, you know, everything, if you take something that looks like, you know, somebody's trash can be somebody's treasure. Yeah. And, you know, I feel that I was the trash in this world, but I'm, I'm God's treasure, you know? That's and, what he does. And I'm his gem. I'm his most beautiful gem. And, you know, I'm not who the world told me I was. And, and I think that is, that is just awesome. Did you guys know that, um, and you probably know this, but and maybe some of you don't, a raw diamond actually looks like a very ugly rock yeah ugly black rock i don't know nothing about diamonds i could probably literally you know get Walk a, right across one, past yeah, one pick an ugly rock <laughs> up and just toss it into a dish just to see it bounce not realizing it's it's a 12 million dollar diamond because i don't know those things but you know what god sees the diamond in the rough yeah. he sees what you can become the real jeweler can go and say that I can make beautiful because the quality is upon him to bring it out but it's already there and you, you know another thing too that a diamond when it goes through the process uh, a process of everything it when they put it in the fire and everything it, it almost like screams it has a loud screech to it well, they're made in fire, actually. Yes. They're made in that's and, and, and it's, they're made in volcanoes. It's a pressure. Yes, they're but, created you know, by it pressure. Screeches. It screeches. It makes a noise. It makes a noise of pain and agony. And it almost people think that it's almost like a like a, a cry of despair when they hear diamonds in the fire. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I had been reading about that, and when you say that, it it makes me realize that every gem and every diamond goes through a process. And sometimes it's a painful process. Yeah. But it creates and it makes us who we are in Christ. Amen. It really does. Yeah. So the jeweler takes that diamond, rough, ugly looking, messed up, and he begins to cut it and shape it. And that's exactly what the Lord does. He takes us as we are, but we don't stay as we are. Yeah. He cuts us and he shapes us into something brilliant. And at the end, the jeweler shows the diamond off. And everybody says, wow, that's amazing. And the jeweler is proud because he took this ugly rock and he formed something beautiful. Do you know when you're being rebellious to God, you're basically telling the jeweler that you know better. And all the jeweler wants to do is bring the brilliance out of you. Allow him. Yeah. Allow him to cut the things that he has to out of your life and to chisel and to sand and to mm -hmm. shape. And sometimes that stuff hurts, but the the jeweler only wants the best for the diamond. And and you know what's awesome too though? It's awesome that when you have a diamond and it's a true diamond and you are that gem, it can get a little 
dirty, it can get a little dusty, it can get a little, but you know what it takes? It takes for us to come and repolish. And it's almost the same thing as our hearts. Sometimes we just need to be reminded and we need to remember what God pulled us out of. Yeah. You know, and every time we're reminded and we remember, we just, man, we just praise and we give God all the glory because it's only Him that could have taken that rock and create it into something beautiful mm -hmm. and it can just be reshined and reshined never think that's pretty much what it's saying here come back that means it can be reshined yeah you know it can be reestablished to be the beautiful gem that it's always been you know just because we mm -hmm. get a little bit of dirt or we get a little bit of something don't don't let that be the end of it yeah don't let that build up and be the end of it come right back repolish it repolish your life Rededicate your life. You know what the drills, the drillers use on the ground to cut through all the rock? They use a diamond. Because it's, once a diamond is formed, it cuts through everything. <laughs> you know, and the last point I want to make is this. Is I had a friend, his name's a jeweler, John the Jeweler. You met John. Oh yeah, I did. And early on, back in my music industry days, I used to buy all my jewelry from him. And he would always want to look at a diamond through that little, you know how they do? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why do you guys do that? He goes, I'm checking to see if they're real or they're fake. And I'm like, dude, they all look the same. He goes, no, no, you don't understand. He goes, look at this. What do you see? And he showed me this diamond that he had in the store. And I looked, and I'm like, this diamond has a, like a, blemish. a, a blemish inside. <laughs> he goes, exactly. That's a real diamond. I said, what do you mean? He goes, cubic zirconias are man-made and they're perfect and flawless. He goes, the reason you can tell a real diamond is because a real diamond has blemishes. Here's the thing. Why do I say that? Because you might have scars in your life mm -hmm. that are going to, you've been abused, you've been hurt, you've been betrayed, and those leave scars and you're like, God, I, I need you to heal me. And he doesn't heal you completely. You still carry these scars that you lived. Do you realize he's just a jeweler? And what makes you real is the blemishes inside of you. Mm, that's good. And just remember this. Jesus himself could have healed himself completely. But he didn't heal the scars. That way you would see him and know that he's real. And that is so powerful, you guys. Because I'll tell you one thing. I have scars throughout many scars you know and I'm sure we all do and every time I sit there and I'm driving and I'm just touching the back of my head and I feel the scar it's another reminder of what God brought me through every time I look in the mirror and I see the burns the keloids on my arm or you know on anywhere that I have it's a reminder to me what God brought me out of every single time and I couldn't be more happier with my scars because I call them my beauty scars. They've made me who I am. They've made me the strong woman that I am. And I praise God for them. Amen. Yeah. Well, uh, we want to thank you for watching. Make sure you give a thumbs up. Yes. Takes a second. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel. If you're listening on a podcast, make sure you subscribe. I think it's called follow. i got to learn the podcast lingo. <laughs> make sure you follow. And um, I believe it gives you a notification when a new new audio comes up. You know, And we just want to thank you. Appreciate you. Come to our website, yes. www.houseofrestchurch.com. We are on Instagram. Uh, on Instagram, look for House of Rest. One word. Like no space. Just House of Rest on Instagram. And if you have Facebook, we're on Facebook under House of Rest yes. Church. So we pray you have a blessed day. We love you guys very, very much. And pray blessings upon each and every one of you and your endeavors and all that you're doing. So, all right. See you later. Bye. Bye.